Hello, hello, it's Let Us Know, and this video is going to be very different from all of my others. It's going to be dedicated to one very large thing in my life, and that is my pets. Yes, I have 23 pet frogs. Now I know that's madness and I'm going to let that sink in by saying that this isn't all of the animals that I have but we'll be here for about 9 hours if I was to go through it and show all of them to you. But a lot of people online have wanted to see this so I'm going to start off with the terrariums that are in the shelf next to my desk and we're going to start off with this one down here and in this terrarium there are painted reed frogs. Now these tiny little guys are one of my newer additions because I have an addiction to buying them and when I see frogs that I like, I will kind of spend whatever is necessary to get them. It is very problematic. Now these little guys, you can see why they are called painted frogs because they have these really, really ornate patterns of yellow, black and reddy, orange kind of colours and they are one of my favourite looking frogs. I hadn't actually seen these guys available before. I had seen photos of them but when I see them I was like, right, I'm buying all of them. I did get five, unfortunately one of them died when I first got them. It is a problem when you buy reptiles and amphibians and kind of frogs like this because they are very delicate and sometimes people don't necessarily give them the best husbandry when they are in pet shops but I have them now and they are probably getting the best you could ever imagine because as you watch this one here he's very well fed. Now despite these being the smallest ones that I have, they make up for it with their vibrancy and personality and they are probably one of the favourites that I own. Now these little guys are from Southern Africa and unfortunately I haven't got names for these guys yet because they are quite new, but I can rectify that if you guys have any ideas, do leave them down in the comments below. Moving straight across to the next terrarium, there's only one frog in here, and this is Lumpy. Now this species of frogs has several different names, they go by the Asian Painted Frog, the Bubble Frog, the Banded Bull Frog, or the Chubby Frog, which I like to call him. I highlighted his eyes there just because you can see where he likes to hide. He is extremely lazy and will only move if something goes past his mouth that he can try and eat. Now this species of frogs does like to burrow, and I actually had to dig him up to show him to you guys. And when I got him out, he was in mid-shed. Yes, frogs shed their skin, exactly the same as lizards and snakes it's just ever so slightly different. Now I'm aware that this could be disgusting to several of you but it's also interesting as well and I know he's an acquired taste because he looks like a living poop but how can you not love that face with these two little buck teeth at the front? Straight up from him is the most established terrarium that I have and the oldest frogs that I have as well. In here are quite a rare frog which I've only ever seen once and I bought them obviously. Now these are marble rain frogs. I have never ever seen these anywhere else and I actually have a pair of them. Now they are quite old these little guys. I've had them a very long time and this one you can just see here is my male. The female doesn't come out very often but she's in there somewhere. She is a lot bigger than him. Unfortunately you can see that one of his eyes is white. He is actually blind in one eye but that does not stop him having a voracious appetite and eating anything that he possibly sees moving in his line of vision. These little ones are from Madagascar and with a name like Marbled Rain Frog that suggests that they only like the rain and of course these are another burrowing species as well so you can see he is quite dirty. And I have to spray this terrarium every day with a water bottle otherwise these guys will go kind of dormant and just bury themselves away until the moisture comes again. That's what they do in the wild. They would literally only come out when it's in the rainy season. They have a lovely cryptic pattern which does make them hard to spot in this terrarium because as you can see it's very very good camouflage. And a cool little thing here you see I've just allocated it with a flash on the screen. Most frogs do this but when they see prey in front of them or something that they can hunt they actually flick their toes. Now we'll leave that little guy to carry on eating and move to the terrarium right next to his and in here is the frog that hates me. Completely and utterly hates me. You may be able to see two little eyes and allocate them right now. This is a tomato frog. Now if he sees me and notices that I've noticed him, he will give me a threat display as you can see just there and he'll puff himself up to be as big as he possibly can. Now these frogs are kind of toxic, not necessarily poisonous, but they do secrete a kind of like waxy substance from their skin that if you get it into your mouth, your mouth will glue shut. And this is a defense mechanism that they have in the wild. If anything kind of grabs hold of them, they will secrete this kind of like waxy substance and the animal's mouth will literally just stick together. It's kind of like a natural super glue. And as you can see, they're aptly named tomato frogs because of, well, look at him. This is another species of frog from Madagascar and he eats anything, absolutely anything that moves. Now 
Moving over to the other side of the room, there's three other exoterras, and these are slightly taller ones, because in here are my more medium to larger size frogs. Starting out with the first exoterra that's on the left, this houses two white tree frogs, and these are actually two males. White tree frogs can be handled ever so slightly more than the other ones I just showed you. No frog really likes being handled unless it has to be, but white tree frogs are a little bit more docile and capable of having some kind of human interaction. Now, as I mentioned, there's two males in here. This one that you see on my hand is called Rigel, and the other one that's in there still sleeping is called Baxter. All of these frogs that I'm showing you are actually nocturnal, and he's no different as you can see. He's not particularly happy that I woke him up. Now another fact about white tree frogs is they've actually adopted the name of dumpy frog because they do have a problem with obesity. These guys will eat pretty much anything that moves and they do get to a size where they're capable of eating mice. So these guys kind of get to a point where as you can see in this photo they get fat rolls. Just to the right of them in the next exoterra, surprisingly there isn't a frog in here. There is actually my crested gecko called Lila. And yes, I am aware that that is a weird name to call a gecko, but at the time I got her, I was playing a certain RPG game, and when you see this fire seraphim's face, you'll get 100 points if you can list the name of the game down below in the comments. Now there is an obscene amount of different morphs when it comes to crested geckos, and she isn't fired up at the moment. When she is fired up, she's almost black and bright orange, so I do believe that she is a fire harlequin crested gecko. To people that don't understand what firing up means, firing up is basically the colour change that crested geckos go through. They can kind of fire up and fire down their colour from being really dull to a really, really bright, vibrant, vivid colour. Moving along again to the right, the final exoterra over here does actually house two frogs. In here are my two milk frogs. We didn't stay away from the frog kick for too long now, did we? <laughs> I need help. <clears throat> yeah, but these are my two milk frogs, and these basically have the exact same care as what the white street frogs that you've just seen, but they are just basically the same kind of thing, but just a different colour. They are, of course, a different species entirely, but they have the same kind of care requirements. These little ones are still both juveniles at the moment, so I'm not aware whether they're male or female, but I am hoping to get a pair and to get them breeding because who doesn't like having little tiny baby frogs? Um, maybe just me. Another inhabitant of the room while I'm over this side, who I can't forget to mention, is my Herman's tortoise, Yuishi. Now I'm aware that this is madness, but we're over halfway now, and these are onto my largest exoterras, and these house my largest frogs. Now this first one houses three of my ultimate favourite species of all time, the mossy frog. Now as I say, I have three inhabitants in here, Emerald, Peridot, and Chartreuse. They are the names of the three mossy frogs that I have. I am unaware if these are all male or female. Unfortunately, I do believe that they are all male, but with mossy frogs, it is extremely hard to tell the sex between the males and the females. All of them call, and 90% of the time have the same kind of thumb pads. Usually just males in frog species have this extra little thumb pad on there so that they can like latch onto the females when they are breeding, but some females have them as well in this species. It is very hard to sex them. Usually a female is larger than the male, but these guys are all really kind of the same size. So I am searching and looking everywhere out there for a female because I would love to breed this species. These frogs are absolutely beautiful to me and they are my favourite of all time. They have this wonderful camouflage to their skin and this texture which they can blend into their surroundings completely. They are also a species of frog that is extremely vocal and every single night they make this kind of hooting and squeaking noise. I'll insert a clip here of now of what a mossy frog sounds like. So yeah, some people might find that annoying, but I don't particularly mind it that much. Into the exoterra next to my mossies is my final large species, and these are my flying frogs. 
These are a relatively new addition to my frog room. I've only had these just over a month or so, but they are absolutely stunning to me. They have this really nice, vibrant yellow colour followed by a royal blue, and they kind of have like dots and spots of it up their sides. And then their webbed feet, which they actually glide with, have this royal blue on them as well. Now they do have the name of flying frogs, and of course a frog can't theoretically actually fly, it doesn't have wings, but with these huge webbed feet that they have, they are capable of gliding huge distances through the canopies of the trees in the wild. There is four of them in this exo Terra and I will be upgrading it to a large one in the future because this is I will agree ever so slightly too small for this species they do require a lot of room being as the fact that they have that capability to glide they will be getting a larger terrarium in the future but I have four of them in here and you can see how absolutely stunning they are with the colors that they have running up and down their sides and you may have noticed that one of them also has white snowflake spots so that's kind of got a soft spot for me with the name of snow the other three unfortunately don't actually have names yet so again if you want to help out with those do leave them down in the comments below if you have any good ideas. One other reason why I have this for in this slightly too small exoterra is because these guys are unfortunately wild caught. Now if you are into frogs or you are looking to get frogs, I know not everybody will be by watching this video, but some people out there obviously will be seeing this as getting frogs themselves, I would always recommend getting captive bred animals purely because wild caught ones come with a hell of a lot of complications when it comes to trying to raise them in captivity. These guys aren't necessarily in 100% tip top shape and you can see they do have some kind of grazes on their skin which are healing but they are inevitably coming from them being caught from the wild and they are ever so slightly underweight. These frogs are automatically going to be very bony because they are designed to be able to glide so they are frogs that don't necessarily carry a lot of bulk like the white tree frogs do. But being as they are wild caught, keeping them in this smaller exoterra is just going to allow me to fatten them up and get them to be eating without so much exerting too much energy. I want to be able to bulk these frogs up and get them into the best condition they can so that they can do the best that they possibly will in captivity. Granted it can be said that not all species have successfully been bred in captivity and this is one species which I believe that is quite so because I've never seen these ones before and I wouldn't necessarily think that they are quite common in the pet trade so it's not very likely that people out there have been trying to breed them in captivity and 90% of these ones that you see will be wild caught. That's just inevitable with some species but on to the next little guy, this one is definitely captive bred. This weird fat little green blob is a fantasy horned froglet. He is extremely tiny at the moment so he's only in a little nano exoterra and I've not got much substrate in there or anything really because he's finding it very difficult to eat. Although he will dart anything that moves, he's not necessarily very quick yet to be able to catch it. So I'm getting him in there just so he can get food because it's a smaller area for him to hunt. Now. These little frogs don't necessarily hunt, fantasy horn frogs and all horn frogs in general basically are just ambush predators, they sit there and wait for something to move past them and then they'll just dive at it and catch it. This species of frog is basically just a mouth on legs and in a very short time this little tiny thing that you see now is going to be about 4 to 5 inches across and be a monster that's capable of eating anything that will literally walk past him. The final three frogs that I have aren't actually in this room and they are fully aquatic species. I have an albino xenobus toad in a studio room where I film all my makeup tutorials and in my fish tank downstairs I have two small dwarf African clawed frogs. So yeah guys, um, that's it, welcome to my zoo, and surprisingly that isn't everything, but this video is long enough, and I've gone on about animals, hopefully this isn't too boring for you, and you found something interesting, and you found out a little bit something extra about me as well, because this is what I have to do behind the scenes of all the glamour of makeup tutorials, pick up frog shit. So yeah, as always, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and until next time, bye bye!